no doubt we'll also hear who has won the Premier League Manager of the Year award um, what we know is this six of the Premier League's best managers of uh, the season have been nominated for the Barclays Manager of the Season award Mikel Arteta Roberto De Zerbi Unai Emery Pep Guardiola Eddie Howe and Marco Silva that's the official team sheet if you like the runners and riders for the Barclays Manager of the Season award but as you'll have seen from that Stuart no Gary O'Neill no Eric Ten Hag and no Thomas Frank mm. now I know you've got you, you're asked for, to vote by the LMA are you not and yes you, and you'll give us your one two three yep. but what do you think of the Barclays Manager of the Season award and the omissions in O'Neill Ten Hag and Frank well what I would say is there's a lot of contenders that have done really good jobs at their varying clubs. I mean, in years gone by, I can't remember looking through the Premier League. I mean, when we vote, we, we vote beyond the Premier League as well. It's, it's any of the leagues you can vote for as an LMA member. Yeah. But when you look at the Premier League, there's a lot of managers that have done really, really good jobs. And what you've got to do, I think, is look and say... At the disposal of their squads, the experience of the manager, all of those things, where the clubs were when maybe they started a job, all of those type of things, and then make your judgment call accordingly from there. I see. So, are you at liberty to tell us who your one, two, three is? Yes, I am. Um, in reverse order, I've gone third place, Vincent Company. I think his first job in England. Uh, to get Burnley promoted, having sold a lot of their better players, I think was a sensational job. So I put me in third place. In second place, I put Pep. Uh, standard of football that that is uh, is that they're playing at the moment. The fact I think they're going to win the Premier League. They're in two major finals. Pep, but he's got the resources, an enviable amount of resources. So I've brought that into account. And my number one's Gary O'Neill because. I think they've got arguably the weakest squad. When he took over the, the, the football club, um, it wasn't easy for him. He's got little experience as a manager. I think he's handled it brilliantly. And they've been safe from relegation probably for the last two months, which is an incredible achievement for Bert, for Bournemouth, who you probably would look at and say that at the last summer, he said, absolute no opers, no chance of staying in the division. He's done a brilliant job with them. So, so even if Pep goes on yes. and City do the treble, yes. you'd still be having Gary O'Neill as your number one? Yes, indeed. I, I have to vote today. He might win, sweep the ball and win all three. If his team play, keep playing like they are, he probably will. And I'll take that and I'll polarise opinion. But I look at it probably across the board with what people have inherited, their experience as managers. Pep's done this continually for year after year. So there's no surprise there for me what he's done. Gary O'Neill, he's new to the Premier League and... Listen, I think he's done a brilliant job in keeping Bournemouth where they are. So are you, are you amazed that in the Barclays Manager of the Season Award, Gary O'Neill doesn't feature? The votes from the public are combined here with a bunch of football experts to decide the winner. That will be announced on Tuesday, May the 30th. It won't be Gary because he's not in the shortlist. Yeah, I'm surprised he's not on there. I, there might be a... I would put, turn around and say, well, he might have Small done a better job bias. than Marco Silva. I, you know, playing devil's advocate. I can see why Eddie Howe's on the list and one or two others are on the list, but I, I just look at it and think that the one thing is there's so many good contenders and each supporter from each club or champion their own manager whether you're a Brighton a Brighton fan whether you're a Villa fan whether you're a Newcastle fan I can quite if you're an Arsenal fan I can understand that I still think Gary O'Neill is hard done by not being on that list personally do you agree with that Simon I, I hear what Stuart's saying and I, I heard you say there under your small small club bias uh, I mean Brentford fans would argue no, we're a big club now. We're getting bigger. Bournemouth would be the same. But I, I do... I, I totally understand where, where you're getting to. I was being slightly facetious, to be honest. Thomas Frank's not on it. No, I Gary's don't... not on it. Well, it depends, what, I mean, it depends what you yardstick awards based upon. I mean, Stuart is speaking from the people, for the people, and because of the people sort of mentality. But the reality of it is, is that it really is defined, I suspect, by remarkable achievements and being at the very top of the pyramid in achieving things and winning things, I think often is the blueprint that people will vote on. If your criteria is to appreciate the fact that someone narrowly avoided the catastrophe or avoided losing something, 
then that's a reasonable scenario to vote under. I think that where Stuart is right, I think Vincent Company should be in the equation because he's taken something that was completely broken, reformed it, put it back together again and won a league with it. And I think looking outside the Premier League is a very good thing to do because it's not the only part of football that should exist. I think Eddie Howe turning a football club round on its heels in 18 months and putting it in the Champions League is quite remarkable with a moderately reasonable level of spend in comparison with the other side you expect to get in the top six. And I think you, you, Pep Guardiola is winning Premier Leagues for fun and dominating football, changing the landscape, dominating the the, 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 the uh, opportunities in Europe now. With, with limitless fun- funds. Well, it doesn't matter if you've got limitless funds. You've still got to manage them properly. We can all have limitless funds. Chelsea have just proved it. No, but what does that do? It gets them the best players. He makes them better, obviously. Well, I agree with But that. it doesn't necessarily get you the best team, does it? I mean, it's a bloody helpful f- f- uh, a part of it. But we all know in this day and age that the key component of a manager's skill is not going on the grass and coaching these fellas. Is managing them and making sure that their minds are right and their tactical setup is right, and you're expecting and demanding the very best from them. Because if these highly paid footballers, they're international footballers in every incarnation, don't know how to play football, then there's something fundamentally wrong. The bottom line is Pep Guardiola is top of the tree, Eddie Howe is second, and Vincent Company's third, in my order. But you've gone, Stuart, not for Pep as your number one, because he is given all this. Uh, all the funds. No, because that he he's needs. the Wolfie Smith of punditry. He's sitting there, power to the people. Gary O'Neill has saved Bournemouth. <laughs> Um, Would you like to answer that? Uh, <laughs> scuttle the accusation. He's, he, he's just took me back to the seventies. You know, tooting and Wolfie way. Smith. <laughs> exactly. The two in popular front speaking <laughs> now. Your number one, Simon. Pep. So Pep. Listen, if City fans come on or other people come on, and Simon comes on and says, "Look, if Pep sweeps the ball and wins all three things and pots up a case for that," I, I it's difficult for me to argue on that. I like to scratch under the surface when, when I'm asked to vote for my manager of the year. So now how difficult it is to take over a football club that were off rock bottom like he had with limited budget, with a team that had been beaten nine at uh, Liverpool, yeah, I yeah, think, and, yeah. and all of those type of things. And to be a rookie manager within the Premier League, all of those type of things, I think he's just done a brilliant job. I really do. He has, by the way, undoubtedly. Yeah, yeah. But it depends what your voting criteria is. If your voting criteria is to celebrate the elite, mm. then amongst that, you have to argue that Pep Guardiola in his division, Vincent Company in his, and to some extent, Eddie Howe, because of the fact that he's moved this situation to such a ridiculous mm. level of achievement against what it was previously. But there'll be a lot of Arsenal fans that turn around and say, well, what about Arteta? You didn't even think, or people didn't even think they'd be anywhere near the top four, let alone that. They've pushed Manchester City where no other team in the country have. They were, and he and his team threw it away. So he can't be rewarded for what they didn't... Oh, we started with low expectations, and when we had an opportunity and we were sailing away with the league, we choked, and then be rewarded as manager of the year. Mm. Actually, Stuart, you're getting a fair bit of backing. I can see a lot of the messages coming in. I'll just... There's Jim and Leighton. Totally agree with Stuart Pearce and Gary O'Neill. Um... And Simon, this is the Barclays Manager of the Season Award obviously favours the elite. The award has gone to the title winning coach twenty four out of twenty nine times. Yes. So the criteria so, must so the criteria must be set in the minds of those. There must be a parameter in which you vote. I don't know if you're given any guidelines, but the expectations are player of the year. When you go for the player of the year, do you pick someone that's in an inauspicious side or do you pick what stand out player of the year? Do you pick Kevin De Bruyne at Man City for his wonderful achievements? Or do you pick um the boy at top for Bournemouth because he helped them get out of a relegation battle. You'll end up picking Kevin De Bruyne most of the time. Mm. Yeah. The criteria that, that we're guided by yeah. is the line of within what they've got at their disposal. At their disposal. As well as, it, it's easy to say, who wins the league, I'll have them. It's easy to I do think, that. I think, I think there's absolute merit in what you're saying, but I, I, ironically in life, we, we talk about meritocracy, we talk about merit, and then we put it into the sentence of saying manager of the year. And then what we do is we nuance it and say, well, actually, merit isn't being the very best. Merit is working within a space that other people perhaps would have more challenges working in. So Gary Neal should be lauded and applauded. And perhaps there should be different categories yeah. of awards. But then you'd be into a situation of awards for awards sake, well, wouldn't you? Pep will end up winning it this year. There's no doubt about that. But yours is a wasted vote. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.